good morning everyone welcome back to another video if you're new here my name is Robin and I live on the south coast of New South Wales and I make content all about gardening flower farming and connecting to nature we started this garden here in February and I'm also starting a backyard flower farm on the property which we are a few months into um, but today I thought I would do a walk around the place and share with you what the garden is looking like. It's very active with birds and noises around because spring is definitely here. It's the 30th of August while I'm filming this. So this is going to be a late August garden tour. We'll start here behind me with the cottage garden. This is a small little cottage permaculture garden where I grow lots of flowers and herbs and greens predominantly. It's nice and close to the house so I don't have to come out too far to pick what I need. Uh, and it's definitely looking really beautiful at the moment. It's probably not the best time to be doing a tour but it has been raining quite a lot here so this is the only time that I really have today to get out and share with you what's going on. But this is a little overview of the garden. I just have these little paths that you can walk through to see the different sections of the garden. We might start with this one here. Actually we'll start with some of these pots that I have. These were the uh, spring bowl pots that I planted in another video. You can see one of the tulips has come up. The one thing I'm finding with a lot of these is that the tulips are just really short and I think that's because the soil just wasn't really uh, fantastic with its nutrients as well as I had a lot of problems with fungus gnats which are kind of little flies. You can kind of see one flying around there which uh, disturb the soil and lay their eggs on the soil and a lot of the pots really dried out so still learning on how to grow bulbs in pots but a few of them are looking really pretty in the garden what is looking amazing still is all of the linaria that we have next to the lamb's ear It's absolutely stunning and is probably one of my favorite flowers that I have grown so far, just in terms of uh, a filler flower. It holds up really well in water. It actually held up the best out of all of the flowers that I had in an arrangement. So I have planted more of this and I'll see how that goes. Below that, I have some uh, orange poppies, which I can see the first little bloom is about to come. I think these are all orange, but some of them might be a pastel ballerina mix too. I'll find out soon. <laughs> uh, and behind that, I have my snapdragons, which are also just about to be in bloom. So I'll have to do maybe like a mid-September garden tour so you can see all of these gorgeous blooms. But um, I really like the structure of how I have layered this garden, having something really small down the bottom, the lamb's ear, area for spikes and pops of color the beautiful uh, ferny foliage of the poppies and then the snapdragons which spike up behind them the broad beans behind that also they add a lot of contrast and height to this area and yeah I'm just overall so happy with this little patch I think it just looks so pretty next to the linaria I have one of my roses that I planted this is the jubilee celebration and it is looking really happy. It's got all new shoots. I think I might fertilize this again today with some uh, seaweed solution. Do have a problem with some of the broad beans falling down because we do have a very windy climate here, but I might stake those up, just tie some string around them. And I also just have a lot of little herbs scattered around. Like I have some parsley here, some thyme, this is another one of those uh, pots. I've got some hyacinths in there and some gorgeous native violets. I've got some tall spiky uh, everlasting daisies there and some poppies which have started flowering. I really love the uh, seed pods on poppies. I think they look so pretty. We're still harvesting lots of kale 
And then coming around here, I still have my giant radish that I'm letting go to seed. It's humongous. It's massive. In this little patch here, I have some nigella planted that I planted as a cool flower, which is just starting to wake up now. As well as some more status, some catnip. And then along here, I have a row of coriander. I love coriander. Some more herbs. I have some flat leaf parsley, lots more coriander, uh, and some society garlic which is also flowering. And these flowers are edible as well as the leaves. Lots of uh, weeds around. <laughs> I also have some of my queen of the night tulips that are flowering. Again, they're very small, but that's okay. Tulips don't grow fantastic in our area just because we have really clay soils. But I think over the years as I amend the soil here, we can get some tulips out. And then on the end here, I just have some oregano that I would like to kind of like spill out over this area. So that is that little patch. Over here, uh, I've got more of the spring bulbs that I have been enjoying every single day. Oh, the cockatoos are going crazy. The anemones are so pretty and I've been really loving these, as well as the hyacinths that are kind of on their way out. Second flush there. But yeah, in this patch, there is pretty much the same stuff kind of going on. We've got lots of linaria down here. Uh, a little bit of stock still flowering. The silver beet is looking beautiful and we've been harvesting quite a lot of this. And that is next to the strawberries, which I've been struggling with lately because a bird comes to peck them all off. So I need to net these and it's not going to look that pretty, but I am probably going to figure out some solution and move a lot of these to a raised bed where I can just have them netted uh, constantly. But yeah, there's so many flowers on here for strawberries. I have another David Austin rose back there which is looking really healthy actually. Uh, and then a row of onions that I had planted ages ago that we've also kind of just been using as spring onions sometimes. And I think I might continue to do that with these. Some celery, which I've never grown celery before and this is looking really great actually. Celery likes a lot of water which this is getting with all of the rain that we've had. So I think it's just, yeah, loving life with all this rain at the moment. And then next to that is some jonquils that are just so pretty on the border. Then I have a little bit of lettuce here behind that I have been harvesting. It is going to seed at the moment, but I'm going to be planting a lot more soon. Still got some pak choy flowers that are flowering here, some busy bees. Um, and oh, I do have actually one of my chrysanthemums that has started opening. This is a rainbow mix. And I can see so many other little buds on this plant. Which is going to be so pretty. Moving over to this area, this is where I have um, these plants, which I were told that they're not actually lavender, they're a fake lavender, which makes sense. They're, I think they're called a canary, canary lavender. I will put the name up on the screen when I can read their comment, which was really helpful. So thank you if you ever see plants in my garden that I'm not too sure about. Uh, I always love getting the ID correct, but it is beautiful nonetheless and providing me with so much color and I just love how tall the spikes are they look really great in arrangements I have some chamomile planted down here and this was kind of planted as a cool flower which is doing really well as a cool flower actually and is coming putting on a lot of growth now I've got some more uh, paper daisies everlasting daisies that are starting now and then my gorgeous ranunculus 
they're just looking so pretty. The blooms are just, I love how tight the blooms are. I love, 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 love blooms like this when they open just a little bit more to something like that. But these are my favorite thing in the garden right now. And I think I might actually have to pick some for my mum who is arriving today. I think she's gonna like these. I have some Mizuna going to flower, which is quite a nice piece. And then lots more everlasting daisies, uh, some more poppies in here. I planted these all as cool flowers and they're doing great. Another one of the pots with some daffodils this time. This is golden dawn daffodil, I think. My patch of calendula has started flowering and with some more daffodils. And next to the bird bath, I also have some more ranunculus. This is a cream variety. Uh, and I just recently cleaned out this whole area. So I'm going to be planting some more greens in here. I gave my lavender a trim because it was just flopping over everywhere, not liking this wet soil. So I might have to move it, but I do see a lot of green shoots on it, which is nice. I've really been enjoying these um, timber crates and using them as pots. I just think they look really pretty in the garden. And behind them, I have my rhubarb that I planted with Diane, a random little cabbage that I need to harvest. Uh, and then I have my Malaleuca sea mist plant back there which I really don't like the placements of the snowflakes around them. I'm going to move those next year, but for now, it kind of looks like a little shrine around the Melaleuca, which is fine. <laughs> it's fine, we'll deal with that. I have also planted a row of aquilegias in here and some sea holly that you saw in my other video. I have a patch of snapdragons over there and woolly bush there and over there, which are going to be nice spikes to kind of hedge this area off. And then the last section here, look at how amazing my borage looks, seriously. It is absolutely stunning. It's grown so big and is going to be really great for this area just to put its roots down and just break up a bit of this clay soil. Borage has a little bit of a tap root, kind of similar to comfrey. It's going to be really great for my clay soils and my tunnel of ranunculus. Wow. Oh, I'm going to have to do another update so soon because there's so many buds and this is just going to be a like a rainbow of color soon. We've got some gorgeous yellow that has started. I can see a little bit more darker buds. I can see a pink one coming. There's pinks, whites, purples, yellows, so many different colors of just a mix that I chucked in here. Uh, and they're growing just so, so well. I did have to net them because of the bandicoot, but I'm going to take that net off soon. But yeah, ranunculus are definitely something that I'm going to be growing a lot more of in the future. They're just amazing producers and a really great cut flower. Got another massive Mizuna plant there going to seed. Uh, some stock over there, the pink one and the purple. My collards, which I'm going to be harvesting soon and just freezing like I did in my previous video. I did plant a, a lupin here the other day. I've never grown lupins. Um, I don't know how it's going to go well here, but let me know if you've ever grown lupins before. I have another rose back there. That's Litchfield Angel. Some sage and some more chamomile. So that is that area pretty much done. Lots going on, lots of flowers, lots of new blooms, which is exciting to see. Yeah, I just really love coming out here and picking some herbs and just enjoying the flowers. I really would like to have like a better outdoor seating area here where I can enjoy it a little bit more but that's what's going on in this garden for now and I will take you down to the native garden area and the flower farm to show you what is happening down there now.
right these beds here behind me don't really have too much planted in them except two sea holly plants that I had left over uh, these ones are going to just rest for a little bit more and eventually be planted more kind of in mid spring and summer but behind all of these trees is the bulk of the flower farm that we will walk through and I'll show you now So we have about five rows done, which is super exciting. Yesterday I worked all day out in the rain trying to get the last row finished, laying all the cardboard down, forking the soil, putting the compost on top and mulching. So I'm really glad that I got that done because I now have five solid rows fully done. And in these rows, I've just still got a lot of cardboard around and sorry about the dog next door is playing with uh, his toy. But I do have a lot of cardboard in the rows and I'm going to just be mulching that eventually. I have just done a little bit of a chop and drop method with some of the materials that I had now just to fill in a little bit of the pathway. But in here, I do have a few things planted. In this row here, I have a lot of... Uh, billy buttons, sea holly and status and then a whole other row of status here and then this is the bed or at least this side of the bed is what I finished yesterday and I've just planted a green manure mix in here of a mixture of different brassicas I think fenugreek maybe it's more of a cooler season mix and this is just going to last for about four weeks or so to grow up and just put a little bit more organic matter back into the soil and break it up a little bit but basically just to add a little bit of life into the soil walking down the rows it's very muddy this is kind of what the status looks like up close very tiny but i do see lots of new shoots which is exciting and this is all just a mix of different colors got some whites, pastel, apricot uh, and I use these and I'm going to be using these as a dried flower and just using them fresh as well but they dry really well and their color stays intact so we'll see how they go. I have or had some yarrow planted here which I think the slugs have been getting. Not too sure what I'm going to be doing about it but yeah I might have to just grow it a little bit bigger before I plant not sure and then I had some baby's breath down there that I was trying to germinate but it just didn't so we're just going to bypass that one it's like constant fails going on here in the garden uh, which is completely normal <laughs> and then behind my shadow is uh, a row of cornflowers which are also picking up now and were planted kind of as a cool flower too not really flower related, but I do have all my onions in here that are growing nicely and and some of them are bulbing up now. This has been a long process to grow onions, but they do look really healthy. And then I have some more uh, red onions on that side, kind of growing a little bit more. This one actually in here looks pretty good, growing nicely. And then a little bit of uh, very sad beetroot over there. Uh, not too sure, not too sure how that's gonna go. And some broccoli, which is just covered in aphids and I'm just letting it go because the aphids can go to that and not to anything else. I will definitely be filming a more kind of dedicated flower farm update video in terms of just like what my plans are, what I'm growing, what I've sown seeds like all that kind of thing how much money I've spent the whole thing uh, I'm going to sit down today and probably film that but in terms of looks that's what it looks like right now also with a lot of those plastic tarps that we're going to keep there and probably just plant like pumpkins in summer in that area or watermelons or something like that yeah the space is definitely enough for what I would like this year and I am really excited to see how the green manure goes and what that does to the soil because I ordered in a lot of compost and it's mushroom compost mixed with other compost and fertilizers uh, it was quite sterile when I got it and didn't have like bugs and microbes and worms and all the things that I like to see in soil 
So I think the green manure is going to do it really good and add that life in really quickly, which will also help to break up the cardboard below the compost that I have put all in this area. It was a lot of cardboard and I'm very much over cardboard now. <laughs> Behind me is my native garden area, which is just looking like a hot mess with all of the different types of mulch we put on here. Something about me, I am a very, very frugal super frugal and uh as and i don't like to pay for much in terms of the garden so a lot of this is just like cardboard that we have and then random mulch laid on top of it whenever we have something that remotely resembles mulch so it's not pretty it's all over the place there's bits of seaweed bits of sugarcane mulch bits of broccoli bits of leaves we even sometimes put cat litter around here nothing edible is in this area so we're just trying to like smother the grass and have less areas to mow pretty much <laughs> do have some funky mushrooms going on it's cool that i actually just stepped on but this is a really good sign because it means that the soil is breaking down and all of this area is turning to soil which is what i like to see so any type of uh, fungi activity i'm okay with a lot of what we have here planted is leptospermums, leptospermum, mat rush, which just helps with clay soil and, and water retention because this area is super muddy. Uh, native banksias, baronia, just really happy actually. I'm really glad that we planted these. Random mulch piles. This is Robin's got some stuff that needs to go somewhere, so it goes here. Leptospermum. Really sad little seedlings, another leptospermum in there, another banksia, some thryptamine, beautiful leptospermum, <laughs> another baronia, which is flowering. They don't look super impressive when they're like down like this, but they're actually really colourful. I also wish that I could describe the scent of Veronia, but it's like one of the most complex little flowers I have ever come across. Like, it is so pungently rich in its the levels of like scents that you get when you smell the flower. I don't know, at the start when you smell it, it smells kind of rosy and then it just like hits you with this sickly sweet, beautiful scent. I don't know, it's like just amazing. I love the smell of baronias. So maybe if you haven't, try, try growing some baronias. Just, I, I never knew how beautiful they smell. All right, that is pretty much it for today. Lots going on, lots about to happen. I'm super tired, super busy, like planning everything, growing stuff. Um, yesterday I was a complete mess, like, covered in mud it is definitely the least glamorous job ever but i absolutely love it and i'm so excited to share how the flowers look over spring and the cottage garden and yeah just so much more happening that is it for today's video thank you so much for coming along with me and taking a walk in the garden with the 50 million other birds that are around at the moment they're super happy super involved in my videos just want to be around just want to have their say that's okay we welcome them let me know what you are getting up to in your garden today or this week what you're planting what you're growing or if you're going into autumn and the cooler months let me know what you're getting up to to prepare for winter thank you so much for watching today's video and thank you for everyone supporting me over on patreon your support means the world i hope you're all having a lovely day wherever you are in the world and until my next one happy gardening everyone <laughs> <laughs>